guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Keely and today we are decorating my yard for Halloween. If you've been around a while, you know that this is my biggest video of the year. I am ready to share it with you guys. It has been several days worth of work and we are going to be doing the biggest and best setup I have ever done, complete with a 12 foot skeleton, huge graveyard, tons of lighting, tons of DIYs on a budget that you can do in your own yard and so much inspiration for Halloween 2023. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel. I've got so much more Halloween content coming and if you've been here a long time, Time, then thank you so much for still hanging out with me and watching. You guys know I am definitely a Halloween girly. I love fall. I love all the rest of the holidays, but Halloween is where I shine. So I'm going to be sharing my setup with you guys and I'm so excited. So come on, let's get started. We've got a lot to do. First thing I'm gonna be doing is working on my tombstones for the graveyard. If you have some of the cheaper styrofoam tombstones like I do, one of the best ways I found to get them to stand up and last is by adding PVC pipe to the back of them. You can use any sort of glue. I just use an inexpensive glue from Dollar Tree, but I actually found out last year that wood glue or something similar works the best. Don't ask me why, but it does, and it doesn't melt the styrofoam like some kinds of glue do. Then all you have to do is get some dowels, you hammer them into the ground, and then you just slip the tombstones over it. Last year, one of my neighbors gave me more tombstones so I'm adding my PVC to the back of the new ones. This is an easy way to use your inexpensive tombstones from year to year without having to replace them or having them break or fly away. front of the graveyard. Now this is all Dollar Tree stuff. All you're gonna need is two of the broom handles that you can buy from Dollar Tree and some pool noodles. I got, I have six pool noodles. I don't think I'm gonna need that many, but we're gonna see. I'm gonna put the poles into the ground and duct tape the pool noodles together to make an archway for the front of the graveyard. I do have fencing that goes along the sides, but you'll see that in just a second. For the archway, I used pool noodles, some duct tape, the two broom handles, black spray paint, zip ties, and dowels. After I got it all up, the top archway part was a little bit flimsy, so I needed to fix that. Now I have seen some people put flexible piping into it to make it more sturdy, and that would totally work, but I didn't have any of that, and I wasn't about to go to Home Depot to get some, so all I did was zip tie some dowels to the back of it, and that made it just like a little bit more sturdy, so it was able to stand up totally straight. It wasn't like falling over, so it just needed like a little bit of extra support, you know? Like me, I always need extra support too. I I also spray painted them all black and spray painted over the duct tape. Now, if all the pool noodles I had gotten would have been black and I had black duct tape, I wouldn't have had to spray paint, but I used what I had and what I could find in my little dollar tray. Take that into consideration though, if you wanna make these, you can get all black and skip the spray painting part. I also added some lights and this spooky fabric onto it. I'll make sure to link everything that I used down below. It turned out really good and I think it was a very simple way to do an arch that you could either leave simple like I did or you could take it up a few notches by adding way more stuff onto it and just using this as the base. That is definitely something that I will probably do next year. Just to introduce myself if you're new here, my name is Keely. I'm 32 years old and my middle name is really Rainbow. I make YouTube videos about home decor, holidays, DIYs, and motherhood, and I like to keep it real. I'm a normal mom with a normal house. I just happen to show mine on the internet. I live in North Carolina. I have three kids and I'm married to my husband, Tim, who works in the oil field, which means he's hardly ever here. I wanna be your new mom friend who will encourage you, give you life hacks to be the mom you wanna be, and I promise that I will never judge you as long as you don't judge me for dressing like Adam Sandler pretty much every morning. I would love to have you subscribe. I put up videos all the time here on YouTube, and I also post a lot on TikTok and Instagram. Don't 
So I do have one of the big 12 foot skeletons from Home Depot. This was one of the biggest investments I've ever done for my yard decor, but I do really think that it makes such a huge impact. I honestly don't regret spending the money on him whatsoever. I do regret throwing away the box that he came because that is what has the instructions on it of how to put him together. Now I probably should know how it goes because it's literally a human skeleton, but I actually had quite a lot of trouble putting it back together this year. It's only year two of having it, so maybe next year I'll have better luck. But I was doing this by myself too, so cut me some slack. After much trial and error, he is all together though, and you guys can say hello to Josh. He is ready for another year and hopefully not falling over during this year. He did take a little tumble last year during a hurricane while I was pregnant and I couldn't get him down in time, but he had some surgery and my husband fixed him all up at the end of the season, so he's good to go. I will be stabilizing him with cinder blocks this year, and I recommend that because the stuff that they give you that comes with him does not work very well, so get you some cinder blocks if you have a Josh. I spent roughly four days decorating the front yard. I'm talking all day, several hours, both during the day and in the evening when the baby went to bed. It was a lot. But what is funny about doing this for a living is the fact that I live in a neighborhood and people drive by and see me out here all day, you know? I actually get a lot of people that stop and talk to me and like ask me questions and probably think I just really love decorating for Halloween. And maybe they think I'm a total weirdo just dressed in Halloween themed clothes for several hours a day filming myself. I don't know. I haven't yet decided if it's weirder to tell them I make YouTube videos because obviously not a lot of people do that for a living. I feel like it's kind of strange to explain. <laughs> or if it's weirder to not tell them during the conversation and have them just wonder about the cameras I have set up and everything. Either way, I do think my neighbors enjoy it. To be honest, I would probably do this without YouTube. I feel like someone has to be the crazy house that goes all out for holidays and keeps the magic and spirit alive. One of my favorite things is hearing kids and families drive by and talk about the decorations or like slow down to look at them. A lot of times I'll be doing stuff in the yard where they can't see me and I'll like overhear kids and stuff and I just love that. I think it's so important to keep all this holiday fun going, especially with the world being crazy all the time. So I'm gonna be the one to keep it going, I guess. I feel like every Everyone has something that they can bring to the world to like make it better and maybe holiday decor is mine I just remember as a kid going around seeing either spooky decor on Halloween or like decor on Christmas and just how much I loved seeing all that stuff and so Maybe that's just my thing. I like to remind everybody that everybody has a talent. Everybody has something that they can bring to the world to make it better. So whatever your thing is, make sure you're sharing that. And that is why I do this. And that's how this all got started. So I hope that you guys can see that and see all of the passion I have when I do videos like this. Josh does have three little friends this year. I use stakes to get them all to stand up. If you have any ideas for some names for Josh's friends, let me know. I do feel like Josh is a rather frat boyish name, so I'm thinking at least one of them should be named Chad. So maybe we can stick with a frat boy theme. I don't know. But let me know what you think. And no offense if that's your name or your husband's. I just went to college in 2009 and Josh and Chad were just peak frat boy names at that time. this year is this animatronic witch from Walmart. I got her on clearance last year. I get almost all of my decorations on clearance. I hate to tell y'all, but I might not be able to link everything and I'll probably never be one of those influencers out here spending thousands of dollars on brand new decor every year so I can link it. Uh, but I will try to link her if I can find it. I do a lot of clearance shopping every year on the 1st of November. I cannot recommend that enough if you enjoy Halloween and want to start building up your decor stash. It's taken me years to build up this much stuff, so if you don't have as much as I do, don't feel bad, okay? I've been working on this for a long time and this is my actual job, so I do make some investments that normal people probably wouldn't make as far as Halloween decorations. Anyway, this witch also needs a name too, so let me know what I should call her down below. She is a little spooky looking and all the neighborhood kids hate her, but She's actually rather friendly when she talks and I kind of like her. I've 
got another Dollar Tree DIY coming at you guys right now. If you want to build an entire coven of witches to scare your neighborhood with, then this is the DIY for you. All you're going to need is a broom handle, of course, <laughs> something round to make a head. I'm using some leftover jack-o'-lantern buckets from previous DIYs, zip ties, some tablecloths, round ones and long ones, and then a witch's hat. You can get pretty much all this stuff from Dollar Tree. So you're gonna put the broom handle in first, hammer it way down in there, okay? Because if it falls over, once this is already made, it's kind of a pain, you gotta take it all apart. Then you're going to secure the head onto the top of the broom handle. I cut a little hole in the bottom of my jack-o'-lantern bucket and just shoved it on there. Then take your round tablecloth and zip tie it to the broom handle underneath the head. And then also add a zip tie down a little bit lower. This is gonna make it, it into like a head with a dress shape. After that, hot glue a witch hat onto the top and then take the long tablecloths and tie them around to create hands that are holding. So you tie them around the middle, knot it in the center to create a little hand and then tie it around the middle, the one next to it. This is super simple, super cheap. Each one of these cost me maybe five bucks to make and I love them, they're so cute. I do think that they would look even better if you had like some black tulle fabric and put it on top of the tablecloths for the dresses. I did add some of the spooky fabric I had to the bottom of their dresses, but tulle would be the move. So do that and if you do, tag me so I can see it. set up a Halloween display in your yard, there are some tools that are totally essential. Hear me out, you're gonna need a rubber mallet, a bunch of duct tape, black spray paint, and a lot of extension cords, and zip ties. I know that sounds like a crazy shopping list, but I don't care what you're planning to set up for Halloween, you're gonna need those things to do it. Do yourself a favor, get them before you start. It's just some essential tools to have on hand before you start setting everything up because zip ties are my best friend, you'll see. So it's day two of decorating. It's still pretty breezy today, which is great. And it's actually been kind of cool, um, which is also great. I've had a morning already. So we're trying to finish today. Hopefully I built the witches last night, but since it's breezy, I they both tipped over. <laughs> So I love that for me. Um, but we're going to jump right into the other side of the yard where I'm making the witch setup and also start working on the cauldron that I'm going to make. I also have some more tombstones to put up today whenever my Amazon order gets here with more dowels. And then I'm gonna have to work on the lighting a little bit because that's the most important part. So let's get started by fixing the witches that tipped over and go from there. For the witch set up on the side of the yard, I'm also going to make a cauldron. I mean, what Halloween witches don't have a cauldron? I want it to be hanging over a fire too because I am extra. I took three of these two by twos that I had just laying around in my yard. I'm not making that up. I actually literally found them laying in my yard, but that's just how my life goes. You could also totally use like tree limbs or something. That would be super cool. Anyway, I zip tied them together at the top to create something to hang the cauldron off of and then took some rope and wrapped it around the top to give it like witchy vibes. I don't know. I just wanted to cover up the zip ties. And of course I spray painted it brown and black and whatever random colors I had to make it look a little rustic, you know? I took these plastic chains from the Dollar Tree and zip tied those to the top. Zip ties are my BFF, y'all, I've told you that, but everything is zip tied together. Then I hooked the cauldron to the chains. The cauldron is from five below. Under the cauldron, I put a bunch of sticks and logs and you know stuff I found in my yard, along with some red Christmas lights under there to make it look like a fire. wanted the cauldron to be cool and look like it had a potion in it so what I did was I took some styrofoam cut it to fit into the cauldron at the top spray painted it black Then I put some purple lights on the top and started hot gluing these clear plastic balls all over it to make it look like bubbles. I got the balls from Amazon. I think they're actually meant to be for like a ball pit, but they worked perfect for this. So 
I'll link those down below. I used a little over 50 of them, so I did have to order two batches, but in hindsight, I could probably get away somehow with just using one batch of them so I didn't have to pay for more. Anyway, my hot glue gun also died during all of this, so that kind of sucks. If you see me like messing with it, that's why. RIP to this uh, hot glue gun. She was a trooper and has done a lot of things, but it's time to get a new one. I absolutely love how this turned out though. It looks so cool when you plug it in outside. It's definitely my favorite DIY of the year. In case you're new or wondering what you can expect on my channel, let me give you a little rundown. This is my favorite time of year, obviously, and you can expect tons of holiday content from here on out. This is the first of several Halloween videos I have planned. After this, I'm gonna be sharing my Halloween front porch setup, which turned out so good, y'all. I'm so excited about it. Then I'm gonna be decorating inside. I'll be doing a full Halloween home tour, and I think I'm even gonna share some fun Halloween party ideas. Don't miss out. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the subscribe button now. I got everything up on both sides of the yard. I really felt like the tree behind the graveyard needed something. So I decided floating jack-o'-lanterns were a good idea. I had a bunch of old Halloween buckets from last year that I had already cut the faces out of. They are from Walmart. They're like a dollar. You just cut the face out of them with an X-Acto knife. They make cute little jack-o'-lanterns. So I did order some battery powered puck lights from Amazon, stuck those in each one and hung them up. And they look so fun floating from the tree. I just use fishing line to hang them up. You can also use fishing line for like floating candles or witch hats and do something like that in a tree too. Looks super cool. I think I'm done for the most part, except for one part. So I wanna kind of walk you guys through the setup and show you how everything's plugged in. I always get a lot of questions about that. And then also like, the lights and just like some up close stuff so you can see, you know, the details and how I kind of assembled everything in case you missed something. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I also will be showing you guys what it looks like at night here in a little bit once it gets dark. So I'm super excited for that because I really want to see how it looks, but I'm going to go over like a little tour of everything during the day and like how it's set up. Decorations don't look that good during the day. Like they're not really meant to look good during the day, especially Halloween decorations because the lighting is what makes them spooky. So I've been trying to make it look decent, but it doesn't always. So we have the fences, obviously, then the cool noodle little archway. Then these lights are spotlights. They change color. I have one here and then I have one up on the fence. They're all plugged in here to this power strip, which you can see snakes through the cemetery to here. I don't have another green extension cord, so it just is there, but you can't see it at night and that's what matters. Then we have all of the tombstones there is another spotlight over here that i need to get i need to go buy a new extension cord because these take like the three prongs and i don't have another three prong extension cord but that's gonna go there to give some light to like this area there's just extension cords through here those are one of them is going to this little head here it's just a little skull head and you can see josh here he's got his cinder block so he doesn't tip over and crack himself again this one's on like a shepherd's hook and then this one is on like a stake. These lights are the Philips Hue lights from last year. I'll link them. I worked with them. They are an investment, but they are really cool. So if you're looking to buy like spotlights for your yard, they are pretty cool. Uh, so they plug in all the way up here, like with the rest of the Philips Hue stuff. So this one is also a Philips Hue light strip. I just thought it would go nicely under the tree here uh, because I have this that's going to have like green laser lights onto the tree. So I'm anxious to see how it looks at night. Hopefully it'll look good. We have the hanging pumpkins in the tree. These are just old pumpkins and I have those little lights that you saw inside of them. Um, I have to turn them on when it gets dark. They're just hanging various places. Since I just set up um, all of these lights and like the spotlights and stuff today, I don't have any idea what it's gonna look like tonight, but that's my setup so far. So if it changes, I'll let you guys know in a voiceover in a little while. So graveyard on this side, and then 
this side is my little witch setup. So I have another extension cord coming out of the garage. I don't have any outside outlets in the front of the house except for one on the porch. So I have to run extension cords through the garage. So I have one coming out to a power strip. Um, the power strips never have any problem. If it's gonna rain a bunch, I unplug it and bring it in and like just roll all this up. For the most part, it's fine. So I have two spotlights here. This one's a black light and that one's one of the color spotlights. I have another one that is out here to see tonight when it gets dark. I'm just gonna check to see like which side needs another one. The witch is plugged into here and so is the lights that are under here and the lights that are gonna be in the cauldron. I'm interested to see once it gets dark how it looks with the lighting on the witches. That's why I have this other one. I think I might need to put that one out. And so that's how all that is set up. I probably am not going to leave her out all September and October because if it rains, you know, I don't think she's meant to be outside. But for video purposes, for you to get the full effect of what it's going to look like on Halloween, here she is out in the outdoors. Um, the kids really can't stand her. They think she looks awful. <laughs> so but I think she's perfect. The witch scene is perfect. Every year I kick the breaker several times um, while putting up Christmas and Halloween lights because we all of our outlets for the garage and the outside of the house and the porch are all on the same breaker. My husband said that this year he thinks we actually might need to get an electrician to come out and like add in another panel or whatever. I don't know, I'm not an electrician, but basically we need to add in some more outlets for outside because there's only a couple outlets in the garage and it's just not sufficient for everything that I do, especially at Christmas because I have uh, probably like 10,000 lights or more. That is just a little, look at the like behind the scenes not fun part of how everything's plugged in and wired up tonight when it gets dark i will do like a test run and see how everything looks and then make some adjustments i'm excited to see how it looks just waiting for it to get dark <laughs> okay guys so let's check this all out at night and see the final setup i'm so excited and happy with how this turned out please let me know what you think in the comments and if you're not subscribed make sure you do that Hope y'all enjoyed hanging out with me today. And if no one's told you lately, I want you to know that you're doing a great job and I love you. I'll see you guys next time.